So in front of us, we got a 2020 R3. I've had this thing for, uh, I've had it for about two months. I've really ridden the bike for about a month. So I figured I got to take this thing back to Yamaha in like a couple days. So I figured there's no time better than now to do the one month review of the 2020 Yamaha R3. I've tested this thing as much as I possibly can in that amount of time. So we're gonna talk about how do I feel now after doing the first ride. If you guys haven't seen me do the first ride yet, maybe click over to that video before you watch this one. That way you can compare my initial thoughts to my thoughts after spending like hundreds of miles on this thing. And let's get this thing going. To start things off and to get it going pretty quickly, I will tell you guys that after riding this thing for a month, I I think I would like it. Actually, no, I know that I like this bike more after spending all that time on it than I did in the first ride. Now, if you guys remember the first ride, I actually like this bike of all of the low CC sport bikes. This one was my favorite. Yes, I do know I need to do an oil change, but there's no point doing an oil change if I'm giving it back to Yamaha literally tomorrow. So you guys will have to forgive the blinking oil light. All right. Um... Let's get this thing going. Let's uh, let's talk about the 2020 R3 that I oh 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 love so much. For you guys new to the channel, uh, I have been riding for I don't know seven years, something like that. I do reviews on all types of motorcycles, so I have experience riding basically everything except for adventure bikes and cruisers. If you're new to the channel. Uh, I do a lot of type of content on motorcycles, so I've got a lot of experience and I'm letting you know that so that you know the type of rider that I am in coming into this because I'm not a new rider. I am experienced. I know what I'm doing. And yeah, we're going to go to the highway to start this video because if we're going to review an R3, a lot of you guys wondering, can a clutchless shift? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It doesn't have a clutchless shifter. That's just uh, putting pressure on the shifter and then letting go of the throttle and on. The reason I wanted to start this video on the highway we are on an extremely busy highway here in Atlanta, and I just want you guys to understand that the R3 does not lack any sort of engine for the highway. That is why we came here first, because a lot of people see this bike and they're like, I don't want that thing because I can't handle the highway. Let me tuck in here to get over three digits. As you can see, the bike has no issues going on the highway. I can easily go triple digits. I'm flying past cars. Now, let's uh, get down to a reasonable speed because I don't want to get a ticket on this motorcycle. So there you go. Myth one, busted. The R3 can easily handle the highway. I don't really understand the comment of the bike can't handle stuff like that. Uh, the amount of acceleration you get out of a 600 or a liter bike is absolutely asinine. There's no reason to have that much acceleration. You can do everything you need to do uh, with a 300 engine, and that's gonna be a theme that I'm gonna continue throughout this video. So while we're still on the highway, let's talk about something that is important on the highway, and that is the rear view mirrors. Uh, the R3 is like this bike, you're chicken winging it, man. You can't really see behind you. You gotta do this type of thing. The mirrors are subpar. I, I, I don't like them. I, it's hard to use them but I am also a motorcyclist that is used to shit like that. We're gonna get off on this exit. We're gonna squeeze in here. As you can tell, laying on the brakes, uh, we have no problem with the brakes. If you guys watched the first ride, you know that I complained that uh, the brakes weren't really bitey enough when I was first riding the motorcycle. I can happily say, now that I've put a couple hundred miles on the bike, it's actually uh, almost 300 actually, now that I've put some miles on the bike, the brakes have bit in and I am very happy with the brakes. They have no issues with me at all. So as I expected in my initial review of my first ride, uh, the brakes just hadn't bit in yet, which is uh, pretty typical from what I'm told. So I am happy to say that once you get on the bike, you use the brakes a little bit. You know, we've taken this bike to the mountains where when you're going downhill, you are having to use the brakes. 
If you guys haven't seen that video, you guys can click down below. I'll put some links to all the other uh, R3 videos I've done. But that's a situation where you gotta have brakes, and if anything, it's gonna help seat the brakes in. So uh, we've done that, and after doing that, the brakes are absolutely solid. Now, they're nothing like you're gonna get on a bigger bike with Brembo's and stuff like that, but they are going to do the job just fine. I can't really tell if I'm in a lane and there's a lane here, or if, okay, we're merging, got it. Okay, that needed to be slightly more clear. So now that we got this highway situation handled, by the way, if you wanna see a more in-depth look at the R3 on the highway, I rode this thing for like four hours or five hours on the highway or something like that. We did a highway video that you can also check out down below. But enough of the highway stuff. Uh, I wanna take this bike to where I've really been surprised with it and that's into the city. So we're gonna take it up here into the city and we're gonna continue this video. All right, so guys, as we get off of the highway here, I can talk about something that I don't like about the bike that I also didn't like in the first ride, and that is the blinker. In all of the videos we have recorded on this bike, we've done a lot of follow car stuff. There are so many clips of me leaving the blinker on, and that's because of the lack of the tactile feel that these blinkers have. They have no feeling clicking them back and forth so what happens is i got my blinker on right and i go to click it to go off and i can't feel any click and the, my blinker is left on i hated it in the first ride i said it then that the blinkers they need more feel i think that even more now and a lot of you guys are probably going to say leaving your blinker on that's not a big deal and it's not but when you're talking about a situation where you've left your blinker on to turn right and you're going down a one-way road and a car is waiting for you to turn in they think you're going to turn in because you left your blinker on they're going to pull out in front of you you're going to have to slam on brakes that puts you in a dangerous position and you know if you don't have a lot of experience you might have an issue navigating that even if you have a lot of experience you still could have a hard time navigating a hard brake or you know trying to uh dodge a car or something like that so the blinkers don't seem like a big deal but for a bike as refined as this bike is, I really need that blinker to be better. The bike is pristine. The fit and finish is of the highest quality. And then I've got this little Chinese aftermarket feel on the blinkers. You know, it, it doesn't fit as good as this bike actually is. And that really makes me sad. That being said, the blinkers are literally the worst part about this entire motorcycle, to be totally freaking honest. So yeah, the blinkers suck, but you know what doesn't suck? The freaking body position on this R3. I truly love it. I think a Yamaha has done an amazing job letting my top part of my body be upright while my the bottom part of my body is like poised and ready to go. I really do enjoy this body position and I hope I don't get hit by a car. No, we're going fam. We're totally going through that. I am I am locked on you, Mr. Nissan Sentra. So like I said, body position on this bike, I love what Yamaha has done. I have never felt so comfortable riding a bike around, especially a city. I'm super like lightweight on the bike so I can maneuver it easily. My back is upright, so it's not going to hurt and be bent over after a long period of time. But my legs are in this like kind of poised position. The combination of the seat and the way the handlebars are, and this is stock, I'm able to ride around super comfortably like I am right now. Backs up straight. I'm kind of just chill. But when I've taken this bike to the mountains, I can scoot back a little bit, and I've got plenty of room to get in a more aggressive body position so the, the bike ends up being a super multi-purpose tool. I now realize that I have to drag race this uh, Dodge, whatever the hell that is, for whoever can get to the single lane fastest. Oh, I guess I won the drag race. The body position of this bike actually gives me more of a naked bike feel where it's comfortable when you want it to, but you got the ability to make it a little more aggressive if that's what you're looking for. So as you guys saw a minute ago as we were trying not to get hit by cars, um, something I've ended up enjoying more than I even expected me to is the light weight of the bike and making it very flicky. Now, when you're riding around town, you're making a lot of quick decisions and you're having to like get around cars and adjust and move around potholes 
you're having to spend a lot of energy in your body to move the bike around. Now I can tell you, I used to have an R6 that I almost always rode around downtown Atlanta. It's, you know, it's the typical downtown situation. It's just a lot of stopping and going and moving and this and that. And you get so exhausted while you ride that it borderline makes riding not enjoyable because you are so tired all the time because you got so much weight. With the R3, it's super light. You don't have that and truly it makes riding more enjoyable because you're not so damn exhausted all the time. Perfect example of the brakes being solid. Came through that turn way too damn fast and had no problem adding ample brakes to the front, slightly giving the rear some. It's been phenomenal. There you go. That was a perfect example. Also perfect example, my blinker is still on. I am not trying to do these things, people. I'm not trying to do these things. This is just speaking from the heart and I'm actually showing accidentally what I'm talking about. So situations like this, I can move this bike around. I have no problem. The weight is super light. I can do whatever I need to do. I can dodge all of these crazy ass people on four wheels that are always trying to kill you. That makes you enjoy riding so much more and that was a stupid move by that car. Put your blinker on, get in the turn lane and then halfway decide you don't want to do it. But it's okay because I'm on a small maneuverable motorcycle that I can get around cars easily. Something I've noticed you guys ask over on Instagram is uh, how the R3 does on gas mileage. <laughs> Honestly, dude, the R3 acts like an old lady in the UK drinking tea. It is sipping that gas. We got a gas gauge, but it barely ever goes down. And I think you guys see how I typically ride a bike around. I'm not really that easy on bikes. And uh, so I'm not driving optimally and the gas is still just sipping out of this bike, which is, it's so nice, dude. I mean, you can literally take this thing out for a couple rides and then eventually have to get a little bit of gas here and there. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome on gas. You would kind of expect that uh, with a bike that has a smaller CC engine, but uh, it, it's really nice to ride around, especially when you're not used to that. So you're gonna definitely save some cash over those big boy bikes if you're a uh, rocket through an R3 on gas. Another thing to hit on is the dash that we have here on the R3. Uh, I liked it the most of all the dashes of all the smaller CC sport bikes. And uh, I still feel the same way. I think the information is given to you in a uh, pretty solid manner. I've had no issues with it. Everything works on it. And I can see all the information clearly. So my opinion hasn't really changed from the first ride. It's a good dash and it continues to be said good dash. So guys, I think that about freaking covers all the changes I've had with the thought process on the R3. I have truly fallen in love with this motorcycle ever since doing the first ride and the, every mile that I put on this bike, I have loved it more and more. Every mile, and I'm not exaggerating, every single mile that I've put on this bike, my love for it goes more and more and more. To end this video, I do want to say something. As I said in the beginning, I am an experienced rider. I am in a very privileged position to where I get to put my fat butt on the vast majority of the motorcycles in the market, which means I get to ride everything. I get to see how everything rides and I love the R3. One of the issues I think our segment has, our motorcycling segment, the majority of the people that are going to get this motorcycle or the Ninja 400 or the CBR 300, any of these smaller CC sport bikes, they are all gonna be new to riding. That's not a shock to anybody. And I think there is this want, wow, yes, fam. I want that as a camera car, holy shit. The majority of the people getting this motorcycle are going to be new to riding and they are not going to have the experience of what it is like to have a 600 CC bike that is an absolute rocket ship that gives you that like, oh my God, I'm going so fast, I can't control myself feeling. It is my belief that that is a dangerous spot to stop. It's my belief that the main reason we see people get an R3 and are like, oh man, had to 
I had to upgrade because the engine wasn't enough. The reason people are wanting that is because they want to know the sensation of being just warped down the highway at a speed that to get that out of a car, you would literally have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, as a guy who has gone through that stage of my life, I totally understand you being curious about that feeling. So by all means, get an R6, get a, get a Hayabusa, I don't care, and go to the highway and do your little run down the highway. What I can also tell you, as a man who has spent a massive amount of time doing that, that gets old very quickly. You do a couple years worth of riding real quick on the highway, and suddenly you, you get that feeling and it just dies. It's just like, okay, cool, we're going quick. In a straight line, oh, there might be a slight curve. But that stops being fun, and you start realizing that a motorcycle is far more than how fast it can accelerate. And once these people that are new to riding and get that experience, they get it, you know, like once you're like, okay, I got it. Thanks for the experience. I'm here now. I understand. Once you get past that, you can then come back to something like the R3 and really realize how good of a bike it is. Does it have a giant engine? No. Do you as a rider need a giant engine? No. I know that gets us into the conversation of need versus want and then the conversation goes to we don't need a motorcycle. You can get another vehicle. And you're right. Like, that's a conversation for another video. But regardless, what I'm telling you, you know, you're probably watching this video, probably new to riding, and you don't have a ton of experience. What I'm telling you is, one, the R3 is a phenomenal motorcycle, and also, it is supremely capable of handling anything you need to do. Highway, technical riding, track days. That's the only thing I haven't done with this, a track day. But uh, based on the riding in the mountains that I've done, it's been phenomenal, so I imagine it would be good on a track as well. I understand your wants, guys. I understand you want bigger engines and you want that feeling, but once you get that feeling and you understand that, okay, cool, that feeling is cool and now I'm over it, I think you'll be able to come back to the R3 and really realize that for the money, this is where you could literally live your motorcycle career on a bike like this and not miss out on any fun that you can possibly have as a motorcyclist. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully I helped you out in finding out how to not hit buckets on the highway. Hopefully this video helps you guys out and makes you understand that the R3 is a phenomenal motorcycle regardless of the size engine it has and that it is supremely capable of doing absolutely anything you need to do on it. Now, whether this bike is for you or not, is not for me to decide. That is for you because every bike is different and the way every person rides their bike is also different. All I can do is tell you guys how I have felt on it for the last, you know, month, two months. I am very sad to have to give this bike back to Yamaha. And as we tuck in here in race position, which is the most comfortable on the highway, I will bid you guys adieu. Outro crew, uh, let me know in the comments, how do you guys feel about 300s? Are they a strictly beginner bike for you? Or do you look at them like I do as completely capable machines for riding? I'm interested what a consensus is on the channel. Channel being the outro crew, the guys to get to the end of the video, the ones that I love so much long time. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one, and uh, and yes, don't tell anybody, this was filmed in 2019. <laughs>